Um, Nobody would understand it if you weren't part of all those societies. Of those, of those secret societies. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, we are out on YouTube. Started the stream, and uh, let's see here. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we're um, going to start talking about the court of co of coins or pentacles in uh, the tarot, and we're going to begin with the four decks that are most commonly uh, sold. Let's say they're the biggest selling decks in the, in the world, in my estimation. Um, now I may be wrong, but, um, you know, some, some famous Tarot people have pretty much indicated that that's the case. And I, I know that the Rider weight deck has, uh, whew, they, they sell millions and millions of decks for Rider weight And, uh, Everybody has a Rider weight deck. And um, tonight I have a very small panel <laughs> and just in case is here on the YouTube channel. And uh, Gilda Keo is here. And, um, and so we're going to begin with the uh, pages of coins and, uh, and the suit of coins and so, Gilda, do you want to have any comments about the suit of coins before we get really rolling here? <laughs> well, the suit of coins is related, it has many layers, and it's related to, the, to materializing uh, out of something, creating form. Yeah. And uh, coins are a means of exchange. And is certainly an exchange which becomes material. And so, um, uh, pentacles sometimes is called, and pentacles because uh, you know in some traditions like the Wicca and so on, the Wiccan, um, the the pentacle is a uh, symbol of the human being when they stretch out their hands and their feet at the, you know, it's kind of- Oh, like the star in the middle star. of it. Yeah. That's right. The five-pointed so star. That, that will uh, give the audience a little entrance in a bit more esoteric. Um, although there are other relations, relationships to the coins which go deeper and more ancient. But for now, I think that these are quite understood by everyone. Mm -hmm. well everybody to... everybody likes to and to have pentacles because it's right. money right. and uh and the physical the physical world everything in the physical world is in right. the pentacles right. um and uh you know, you know so so it includes uh how you acquire the pentacles like work skill mm -hmm. skill and, and work and what you do and all of that so that suit will address uh, your, the position of the neophyte looking for answers with a uh, relationship to um, the material side of manifesting uh, whatever it is that, that, you know, that needs manifesting. And how do you do it? Do you use your hands? Do you go to the office? And uh, are, you, are you a speaker? Are you a weaver? Or, uh, you know, so it, it all depends on it, it will give you insights into that which allow you to right. bring down a manifested form of, of mater material. Right. And so the fundamental, to me, the fundamental um, fallacy of relying on the pentacles, and of course we have um, the former president of the United States is sort of like the poster boy of pentacles because he's master. He's manifested every, everything that he possibly could, the top of everything. Uh, he uh, at least claims to be a billionaire. He, um, he has had three trophy wives, and he's been president of the United States. And, um, and so it seems like he's had 
um, everything that one could ever want. And so the only question I ask about him is, is this man happy? And I've never had an occasion when I thought he was happy about anything. Um, and so I have a, um, I have a, a picture that I took outside my house one time. Whoops, what did I do? I think I might have messed that up. Let me reshare that. Okay, so here's the picture. And um, it's, I'm going to make it larger so you can see the name of this boat. Uh, this is a, a uh, 64 foot motor yacht. And, and uh, the owner of this motor yacht knows what I'm about to tell you because he knows that it's never enough. And I, I've had a boat on the Chesapeake Bay about half that size or a little less than half that size. And uh, I remember the first time I, I had a partner that shared the cost of it with me. And the first time we took the boat out, he said, we need a bigger boat. <laughs> and, and um, you know, a 64 footer is probably big enough in the Chesapeake Bay, but even a 64 footer, if you take it out into the ocean, is, um, is not enough. And the other point that I like to make about the pentacles is that they are not alive. Everything in the pentacles is um, dead. <laughs> There's nothing alive in the pentacles. And, um, and so our materialistic culture has us wanting to get a bigger boat, a bigger boat, a bigger boat, uh, or whatever it is. But as you see, uh, this boat isn't serving its purpose here. It's just empty uh, at the dock. And, um, and, and it's not alive because it has to wait for a human being to take it out and use it for its purpose. And um, mm -hmm. so anyway, any comment on that, Gilda? Yes, there's always a relationship. And if um, the accumulation of forms materialize when, when, when they're not used because they are not, uh, don't, they don't have meaning and purpose, then it becomes uh, toxic. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, what becomes toxic is where it comes from, what it's doing, and all of the things related to it. Mm -hmm. How it got, where, where the materials come from, what it does, what, what it's putting out, um, etc. You know, those are the things that people then begin to notice. But it is inherently because it's not serving, it's not being, um, uh, it's not alive. Basically, that was a very good way of putting it. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's my object lesson for today. That if you <laughs> if you chase material things all your life and materialism, you you end up like King Midas with with uh, your daughter turned into gold, which is what may in fact happen. Now we have a a user on um, on the YouTube channel. And I'm trying to decide whether this is serious or not. I'm not going to say the name because I think it may be um, blasphemous or, um, you know, a, a not good name. But anyway, it appears that this person is using a, la a language which looks like Romaji Japanese. And it says Goku bodies. Saitama. Yeah, I don't know what that means, um, unless it's uh, an advertisement for um, uh, a bar, which is what I think it is. And so what I'm going to do, I'm regretting this very much, but I am going to hide you from this YouTube channel because I think you are... Uh, 
doing something that's not uh, not good here. And uh, most well, he's people, not tr being transparent. Not being transparent, and the the name itself is um, the name he's using as a uh, uh, as an avatar is definitely not appropriate, probably, and uh, and then. Um, when he says Goku bodies, he's probably um, advertising a Japanese bar. And he has the misfortune of me knowing uh, something about Japan. <laughs> uh, and so I'm sorry, I had to remove that. That was very inappropriate. And uh, if, if you don't know what, what he was saying, better off not knowing <laughs> that's what i would say it's not appropriate in polite company um okay just in case the b just in case says the bigger boat isn't on top of maslow's pyramid um yeah you, you can be just as happy on a on a uh, 13 foot uh sail uh, surfboard with a sail on it as you can be on a a uh, 64 foot motor yacht. I know that from personal experience. And so it doesn't, it doesn't make you happier to have more and, and more, more, more. You have to find happiness in a balance in life. And anyway, that's my experience. Um, I would say that uh, when a lot of it stems from being uh, self-sufficient or being able to uh, have it in case of, you know, mm -hmm. one is one place the field. And um, it is paraded in front of people like the proverbial uh, carrot in front of the donkey. <laughs> yeah. so, which causes then the, the, the people to strive and strive to have that, to, to right. get there. And eventually when you get to that carrot, you realize that there's another one in front of you and another one and another one, it just never stops. Right. So then that's when, when the realization dawns that, hmm, I'm being led like the donkey <laughs> by my desires or right. and, and this sort of thing. And then you can uh, check on all of uh, uh, the other departments which allow you to become more integral in as a human being. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well, absolutely. And um, it kind of misses <clears throat> the point of the four um, suits of, of uh, the tarot in terms of the tarot being a, a roadmap for life because we, in, in our lifetime, we want to seek wholeness. We want to have the... <coughs> Sorry. Well, Bless you. I beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> can't get to the, to the switch on my microphone fast enough. Um, but I'll put, I'll put my... Well, like, like the root word integrity and integral. Integral is when you when all of the pieces of the pie are alive and functioning. Right, and integrity, right. which comes from the same root, it's uh, a meaning and a presence. It involves that. So when that is missing and yet one is striving and working really hard and uh, uh, wasting all the energy there and then they get there and and someone saying, oh, well, um, you know, material is not everything. Yeah. So, you know, they might be very disappointed and they might then need uh, to go to the psychiatrist. Oh my God, oh, my life, I've been chasing this now I'm here and yep. you know, I'm a complete failure. So there's a lot of indications in the society that do not really support uh, the, the, the integral human being to have meaning and purpose in, in, in a deep, way and also be in the world right and um 
in the case of our former president, he had two failed marriages, not one. I only had one. <laughs> and and um, and the point is, um, you have to grow up. You have to uh, learn how to live live your life in a balanced way. And um, you know, we've been talking about the other uh, suits for a couple months now, and you have to have a piece of all of them in your life in order to have any balance whatsoever. And um, and so, uh, you know, we, th we think that, wow, if we hoard things, uh, we're going to be happy. Um, and that, that just isn't necessarily the truth. Uh, well, I, I think it's all connected to the way the flow of the zeitgeist in which one, a person lives. Because let's, for example, uh, I'll give an example where they're hoarding uh, this and that, but it's hoarding is could also be related to um, uh, recycling, because instead of buying, you saved it because you're going to use it, and you actually do. Well, it's time to do. You go to your basement, you look for this and that, and then you get you use it. So uh, when hoarding gets into play, it's related to the not enough point which you showed and spoke about it is a lack of um it is a complete and, and this is this is a result of the society in which one lives in it's sure. not a person is not completely independent or at, at uh let's say oh you are this and we find a lot of the times when things that, that are placed on the human being itself oh it's it becomes such a burden after a while, but it, mm -hmm. it's, it's both and it's yeah. not just, yeah. Yeah, and, and so uh, you need to be able to slow down and uh, smell the roses as they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? okay. And uh, so uh, Julie Edelin, I've been trying to admit you as a uh, panelist here, but I, I guess you're not intending to join us um well so the the history of the of the coins in the tarot is a very interesting one and it wasn't always coins so um i will bring out this this particular discovery i made from earlier mm -hmm. decks in the 1400s mm -hmm. and in which the circular which later turned on in turn into pentacles and coins were mirrors. Oh, mirrors, yeah, that was exactly. interesting. So that yeah. is uh, before it even became uh, the coins of the pentacles, there were right. mirrors that people were looking into. And, what, and, <laughs> and guess what, what? What happens when you look into the mirror? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to uh, certainly have to evaluate yourself, no question. Exactly. And how deep that goes. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different layer, mm -hmm. and I'll have to say that that layer is not found in any deck, modern deck. None, mm -hmm. none have that because it's completely, it, it has been integrated into the occultism of, in the matrix of the Kabbalah, and um, there is no, uh, the, the, the depth of the Kabbalah is not what is usually portrayed in even the best of decks that are researched with the symbology, the, the planetary, the astrology, and the corresponding letter of the Hebrew language. Yeah. Even, even then, you right. will not find that particular detail. Yeah, we need, we need to understand that there are a lot of secrets that people learn from, you know, hundreds of years if not thousands and um and we can't get all of them in the tarot but we, we're getting quite a few now mm -hmm. so uh just in case says i knew a guy who had it all lovely wife big bill an airplane etc until he gave it all away and moved into a shed in spain to do what he always wanted to do repairing old scooters 
<laughs> whatever floats your boat, <laughs> right? Well, I, I would I would say then that this person had no worries in the world. He already um, so obviously he might have moved into the shack and repair. But if he had ever, ever needed something or another, he wouldn't be in need because he 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 already knew. So it's about the need, the meaning, and the purpose. Well, and what is your internal need, your psychic need? Exactly, um, and it's right. psychic. It's a reflection of uh, what, what things begin there. That's why uh, the tarot, in reality, you know, you, this, you you run a Jungian platform also, which deals with dreams, uh -huh. and uh, that's a precursor of manifesting a tarot deck. So a tarot deck precursor is actually of what? No, I'm sorry. Manifesting a tarot deck as yes. a way of finding out what's going on. Right. If you go, uh, so it's a, it's rather also a pictorial language that's also including thought and yeah. letters and planets and astrology. So it's bringing it down to uh, a, a, a milieu that using pictures. And nowadays, if you find the companion book, then you also get history. Yeah. And... Um... You're reminding me of the Bota deck, which is a very at a very superficial layer, but it allows average people to manifest a tarot deck uh, because it is it's like a coloring book. It's it's all just uh, mm -hmm. it's all just uh, yeah, that's part of black, the process. Black and white lines. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they tell you what colors to put in. So you don't even have to decide the colors. Uh, they tell you what colors to put in and where. And um, But if you start to do that, you realize very, very quickly that it is, um, it's forcing you to understand things that you could not have known just by memorizing a tarot card, for example, and, and the meaning of it. By actually right. sitting there and coloring in the colors, it makes a big difference. And right. it, it, it does transform you psychologically. Well, originally from, from you know, and I'm one of those sticklers for the, the source of where things originate. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it comes from, there, there's a point. And then in order, a point is not, you're just there as immobile. So you put another point over there and okay, oh, there's something now, there's two. And yeah. then you make a line from this point to that point. Right. And, oh, but something happened. Yeah, something right. happened on your way to, to Mary's house, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what starts the whole thing. So when, right. when what, what was it that you mentioned? A coloring book, is that what you said? Yeah, well, no, the, the tarot cards in the Bota deck. Yeah, the, I have that deck. Yeah, the the bill it's Bota stands for builders of the Aditam, mm -hmm. and the Aditam means garden, as I understand it. And it's a it's a group located in um, Los Angeles that had in it um, uh, Case and uh, Crowley. Uh, among others, there were great rivals, but nonetheless, they were both in the group originally. And it's the source of the Golden Dawn deck over the early part of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay. they were teaching this esoterica um, back in its heyday, which was maybe the 1920s and 30s. And, but it still exists and it, it, they have a website and you can buy the BOTA deck on Amazon. It's very inexpensive. It's like uh, $8 or something. And basically it's, uh, you know, all black and white line drawings. And they give you a little book that says, you know, take a, a colored pencil and fill in this color here and this color there. Mm -hmm. And if you do that as a meditation, and I've done it, in part, I didn't do the whole thing, but I, I did it enough to get the gestalt of what they were trying to do. What they, what it does is you do find it transform, transformational uh, very quickly. 
uh, you know, you, you all experience that and doing it on uh, one card. <laughs> and and um, what are the uh, what are the lines that transformed you? Was it because you made connections? Because uh, going through the process allowed you to observe the matrix, or because you got in contact with things you would never look at. Uh, I mean, I, I think um, you know it's like going to a movie. If you go to a movie, it's quite passive. You're, you know, somebody may be galloping a horse across a, um, a plane very fast, right? And but you're just watching it, right? And so if you just get a tarot card, um, it's kind of like that, but it's nothing, it has no comparison to actually doing. Okay, so if you then actually go out and get on a horse and try to gallop it across the plane, uh, then you say, Oh, wow, oh, you have you wind in your hairs? That's uh, quite a different experience. And so the, you know, the idea of the Bota deck is to, you know, give you an experience of the secret things that are in your psyche that the Tarot deck expresses. You start to express it too and realize it rather than just having uh, Skip and Gilda talk to you, you know, and say, oh, this is what it means, and this is what it means, and you're sitting there saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, I got it, right? Um, you know, it's not quite that easy, but if you actually engage yourself and actually start making, you know, as we talk about these cards, you actually start making cards, um, then you, it's quite a different experience. And so that's what the idea of the Bota deck is uh, to give you that experience. And it's, it's worthwhile having. So if you, if um, speaking now to the audience on YouTube, um, it's worth doing this, which is get a copy of the Bota deck. It's less than $10 on Amazon. And uh, you, you should have, you know, a small, set of colored pencils maybe 12 of them is is enough and and then actually start coloring in these cards that's a different order of magnitude that's like jumping on the horse and experiencing what you're doing um you know it's not completely because you're not having to develop a card out of the clear blue sky but you definitely can can see something like you know what they're intending from that um, so that brings us back to the pentacles yes which to do that what how, what did you need you needed your hands and your yeah. legs you either right. walk somewhere or you use your hands for something so that that is what you go out the the thought the higher the thinking needs to be embodied and then become an activity which is also embodied. It's not some, something out there that, that uh, like you mentioned, that you either copy because somebody says so or you memorize it because they say that this is what you have to do. It's something that you embody and your body responds to the activity you're using with your hands or your feet, which is right, the other right. points of the pentacle. Yeah, and obviously that doesn't make you an adept uh, because you know it gives you a sort of a mid-level experience, but uh, in order to claim you're an adept with the tarot, you'd have to develop your own deck of cards. Um, you have to also, whatever development goes on, uh, uh, it, it's, it's concurrent with the inner development, which the person is able to see in the mirror, let's say. Precisely, uh, precisely. Um, okay, so I have, um, I have a few books in front of me. Um, here I have the, um, let's see, I guess I better and cloak for a moment. Um, and so I have in my hand 
the Library of Esoterica, the Tarot. These, oh, how pretty. These books are quite. There's wow. one on on astrology as well. They're very good books. Beautiful. And, and this was only thirty dollars, and it came out about a year ago. And uh, Jordan Jordan Hoggard actually has a uh, he actually has two cards in this book. So to his great credit, they were his uh, cards were selected. Um, so it's called the Library Esoterica. The, it's called Library of Esoterica, and it's going to be a whole series, but the first, volume one of the series is Tarot, volume two is Astrology, and I'm not sure what volume three is. Uh, I, I was just checking to see if one other book was in the series, but it's not. Um, I'm not sure what the next series is but you know the point is that you know the tarot is sort of an interim step toward uh being an adept because an adept if you were an adept then you would make your own tarot deck and uh, you would be an art an artiste and be able to make a beautiful deck and uh so Patrick Hollywood has joined us. Good evening, Patrick. Uh, yeah, I, I think that also part of it has to do with um, the making of it, which is also part of the pentacles mm -hmm. that um, forces the person to, to face it, face it and, and develop an agency relationship, which takes you to the next step. And that becomes the path of uh, the path of realization. Which <laughs> is the oh. path. Oh, bless <laughs> you, again and again. Yeah. The the path of the adept. That becomes the uh, path of the adept that you're talking about. We can I, hear I, you. Yeah, I didn't quite. Un, oh. I, I didn't quite mute that properly um oh. <laughs> sorry some allergen is blowing through my room at this moment <laughs> uh, so and henry caripa has joined us okay so anyway i want to read um, uh, just a little bit of what the this book on um the tarot says on the uh, pentacles it says pentacles are the suit of material possession, um, career, and bodily health. They signify the grounding need for home, hearth, and family. Associated with the element of earth, pentacles allude to matters of business and money, property, and transactions, reminding us to be aware of both our innate <coughs> genero <coughs> generosity and our occasional greed. Just a moment. Well, something is suddenly getting me. I can't, it's affecting my voice as well. In a deck of playing cards, pentacles correspond to the diamonds. And um, it, this book has, um, any number of examples of different um, different cards. Uh, I'll give you an example here. There's material gain, Venus in Virgo, and then uh, here are some interesting examples. Oh, in those book. are beautiful. Yeah, and mm. that. Mm. Um, let's see if I have one more page over here. There's the two of pentacles, and yes. a couple of different versions. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yes. So that's a very interesting artistic one on the mm -hmm. on the left side, with uh, with three heads in the middle of the coin. Do you see that? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Look. No, I I can't see it very well. But... 
Right. Well, it says uh, this is the Catuso Taro, Renato, C no, Gutusa, Gutuso Taro, Miss, Miss Renato Gutuso. This rare deck by artist Renato Gutuso reinterprets as reinterprets the arcana through the artist uh, uh, abstracted and contemporary aesthetic, exploring tarot and archetypes through a modern lens. The Gutero offers a high art take on classic symbology and tradition. Yeah, wow. Interesting. Yeah, very cool. And what is the name of the deck? It's uh, Gaturo? Gu Guturo? Gu Gutuso. Oh, Gutuso. G-U-T-T-U-S-O, Tarot. And it was created in 1983. It's quite interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's exactly when, that was the, when the whole boom began. And I suppose Stuart Kaplan was the leading uh, lumen, uh, person who found that to be a great thing to introduce to the gate to the um, market uh, and we go again to the market side of it which is also coins uh, but that also so it has the coin has a double face so that's yeah. something also to consider like for example uh, Stuart Kaplan brought those uh, game cards to the United States and it created a boom all yeah, kinds yeah. of uh, sure. situations developed because there was a the the pentacles behind it, the money yeah. behind it, the business, the orientation, and everything else. So it, 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 to ignore it and say, well, is materialism or not, it is an integral part of how all of it develops. It's just one aspect of it. Yeah. Okay, so let me, uh, I'll just read through um, the description here, which is attaining abundance and it uh, this lists the entire uh, suit. And so I'll just go through what it says here, and then we'll go to uh, the most common uh, decks. But uh, first is the ace, and it means goals realized. The ace of swords signifies the moments in which we imagine and create. This is the card of tangible results, uh, hard work, that reaps reward. Okay, so we're reaping our reward in the pentacles. Now the two right. means flexibility and adaptability. The two of pentacles encourages an agile fluid approach to life, asking us to take on a multitude of tasks with a balanced calm. The three, skill and cooperation the Three of Pentacles is a card of collaboration, collaborative action, celebrating our unique potential and abilities, especially when working with others. Four, uh, solidity control. The Four of Pentacles warns us to be aware of our tendency uh, for stubbornness and reminds us that resistance to change results in stagnation. And uh, it so happens that I, I did pull out the, the Four of Pentacles here, if I can find it quickly, um, in the, in the right of way. I, I was okay. looking at one of my decks, and I found something curious about the Four. Uh -huh. The Four is very powerful, because the Four is what right. concretizes everything. Right. Four cons, Four. And it has an aspect to it, and I will always probably always find the more esoteric one, where right. you step out and you look at it, because you're looking at what you built. You're right. looking at the at the manifestation of it. You are actually then encountering it. You're no longer busy building it. You right. are. So, you have already built it. So here's the the four of pentacles mm -hmm. uh, and it has a has a king that's uh, holding on tightly to his money it's probably king midas or somebody like that right. or our current but, president or our former <laughs> president <laughs> who's well, trying the to, others, trying the, to so the other on. side of it 
the other side of it is that you step back and look at it in awe and wonder. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the fluidity that, that, that you were talking about, then uh, moves on to the next thing. So right. you, there is that awe and wonder. It, so it's actually, that car shows it, it that it's only one side of, of the, the miserly side, but there's another side which you, you actually is celebratory. Um, mm -hmm. You'll find that in the wands, I think, in the forest, as, you know, they're all celebrating. Yep. So in, in, in reality, this one also has that yeah. because, uh, because you're actually witnessing the result of the manifestation which you have engaged with. So that is the other side of it, right. which will lead you out of that pictorial picture of wanting to hoard it. You say, oh, I wonder, and how can I share it? Or, or, or isn't the world beautiful? And all of these other uh, sentiments that, that certainly are beyond grasp. Right. So then the five of coins would be worries and concerns, imbalance. The five of pentacles asks us to be wary of negating our own needs for others and instead connect to self and spirit um, and uh, I guess I could share what these cards look like which is right so here we're moving on it's the next step remember that that they work like they work in sequence so this is right. the next step if 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 that be as that key might as was grasping and then now you know time moved and you're still grasping if you continue grasping you'll be in a situation right mm -hmm. um so you're actually in a situation of needing to realize the next step and so after after working hard to build something now it's time to go to the next level uh do do i share it with others um do i create a community do i so so it takes out of the squareness of the concrete four into the next thing right and so here uh it's about imbalance and here we see in this uh, rider weight card um that you know the people that have succeeded with the coins are inside the church and they're very happy in there but there's uh, poverty going by outside so that's a example of that uh, we're we're not going to do this right now in deep in detail, but I just to give you a sense what as a reading. Yeah, so the this. coin the a way to read the coins were all would be always not all only the face that is showing, but for the reader to be aware of the other side of, yes. the, of the coin. And right. when they are, then they can really uh take it to the next level. They can click right. oh and, and just as just in case says the five and six are about living as an artist. I'll just show you the six of coins. Not sure that the, this is uh, noblesse oblige, I guess. The, the wealthy people have to uh, be a little philanthropical or they're going to, or people are going to rebel well, and the take, wealthy take people, them to the guillotine. <laughs> yes, well, the wealthy people are wealthy because of all the others who do the work for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be wealthy, right? Right. So, there, um, see, th this is where I believe that perhaps when a new, a new modern deck gets underway, that this card will, will resemble the fact that here shows them below and so on, but there is a connection, a connectivity that that is essential, and that's why that person is where he is, right. handing so, out those coins. And that's right. you cannot see that here. Right. So uh, in in the, in the that's encyclopedia the of esoteric, it says uh, the six is about perspective and balance. The six of pentacles signifies shifts in power that result in balance and equilibrium and re reminds us that generally <laughs> that generosity is almost always reciprocated. Well, <laughs> that. right. But this card does not show um, it's, it's highly 
imbalanced. These yes. people <laughs> and the other man are completely from different sides of the planet. Right. So well, we know we know people like like that. Right. And, this is know, still there, yeah. but what I'm saying is that it doesn't. Uh, the other side of the coin is not featured. Right. So, just as another example, now um, the seven of coins. Um, so here, um, preparation assessment. The seven of pentacles asks for calm evaluation a moment taken to learn from past accomplishments before embarking on new paths. So. Right. They all build on the one before and they build on the one after. So here you can see that the coin is all the way to the top of the mm -hmm. tree. And then there's one loose in between his legs. So he's got pretty much the whole area covered, but right. he doesn't know now what, where to put another coin or, right? The eighth coin coming, wh where am I gonna put it? In the air? Because he's got it everywhere already. So right. then a, a different kind of change has to occur than the one he's been using. Right. So that, th this one will give you that. And just in case made an interesting comment here, he says, it always seemed to me that one of the beggars on the Six of Pentacles is a pretender. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Mm. Oh. Oh. oh, bless you. That certainly is a, uh, uh, an interesting uh, take to explore. What does that mean to you and why did you think of it? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up again uh, because I, I think that is an interesting Why did, did uh, Mr. Case think of it? Right. Um, That's because he doesn't yeah. trust the person that is in charge, right? Okay. Giving, donating, or, or so, the people underneath, or whatever. So he he thinks that one one of these two guys is a pretender, and, and why uh, would it be pretending? To, well, to, maybe he doesn't. Uh, maybe he doesn't uh, really need any money, but he's pretending to need money so that he can get a gift like this guy here oh so he's 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 trying to 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 get money and he doesn't need it is that what he's yeah, saying yeah that's the general idea. And, and then there's also he uh what i say is pretending it could be well uh it's one of one of the those uh standing but now it's taking that other role to see what it's like <laughs> to be there like an actor right actors actors for sure print. okay so number eight um number eight is this one so see the tower is endless and and whatever we have an idea just like that comment that you just share from mr case that says oh ding the bell rings okay, so Yes. So number eight is about planning and organizing, implementing uh, the eight of pentacles demands diligence, determination, and a disciplined focus in both our work and our lives. And so I would say that, that a big word here is skill. Yeah. This is, this is about becoming a journeyman in whatever it is you're going right. to do. Um, right. Accessing what one needs in order to improve the skills and put them to, to yeah. the task. Patrick Hart Hollywood says, I have angels around me. I don't think most people see angels or demons these days. Well, I certainly do. <laughs> That's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're lucky if you see them. Um, yes. Okay, um, so number nine, I will give you number nine here in a moment. Um, okay, so there's number nine and it says self-reliance and success. The nine of pentacles represents resourcefulness and self-discipline and celebrate self-motivation and independence. And so this See, lady, the she's got it all. 
Well, yes, and in a way, because it has a, a base of numerology behind it, the number nine is, a, is the last single number before we start at using, going back to the beginning and adding two numbers. Right. So at this point, this person has the realization is completed. A mm -hmm. cycle is completed. So um, that, that's also embedded in this. That, that it's versus the four, which is a sort of completion. But here is, is the whole cycle has been traversed. Mm -hmm. So right you've now. got the grapes in the trees, you've yep. got coins, you've got the, the bird in your hand and trees Beautiful flowing. And, and you have a, a sunny, uh, a yellow sky and so on. So yeah. you've got the four things. I don't see a cup there, but uh, you know you've you've realized a, what allows for life and uh, well, the, the joy, is... jo and enjoying enjoying the fruits of of the full cycle. That right, and just... the, well, in this case, I think the cup would be the woman herself, wouldn't right. it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's interesting enough; those little designs she has on her cloak is uh they look like like the sign of venus but just a little right 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 yeah absolutely so it's and, a planet of beauty sociability and right. and, and communion and in right. in good cheer and that sort of thing and patrick says is is the nine also reversed well yes of course all the all the cards can be reversed and so it would mean you got nothing under control <laughs> instead of you have everything under control you got nothing under control so you better think about what you need to do to get things under control okay. well reverse might also be that you have you have acquired all of that and you have no joy you cannot you're not enjoying the fruits of your labor again like our poster boy Right, you something because why you know reverse means that something else uh, is something is missing from that the totality of that 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 uh, trip that you took <laughs> that right. journey. Right. Okay. So number ten is uh, inner and outer wisdom coming full circle. The ten of pentacles signifies success security and affluence attained through diligence and value in tradition. Um, so this is, you know, you got it all. And, and that description you're reading is from where? It's from the um, Library of Esoterica. Mm. Okay. Um, tradition in some way here is represented as structures. Yeah, like uh, you know, there is a house built. There is yeah, an arch. There's, there's a... an inner and out. There's a whole matrix going right. on here. And there's so, a family seal here. Right, that right, sort right. of thing. Right. I, right. Not, I wonder if there's a family seal in every ten of coins. I haven't really uh, looked at it, but um, I haven't looked at that issue. But yeah, okay. Tradition so, can be interpreted in many ways. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, let's but see what we got. I also here. see their continuity, the continuity of where you came and where you're going. Right. Okay. So then the then the page of pentacles, and this is what he looks like. And this is really the topic for tonight is the the court of pentacles. So this is the page of Pentacles, and here's what it says here. Manifestation, practicality, the page of Pentacles encourages practiced and focused effort and represents diligent work rewarded by progress and inner growth. So, you know, like the page of Pentacles would be like the way you feel when you get your diploma from high school or you graduate from a university setting or something like that that would be an example of something where i you like do... i like it when when you mentioned that uh this this particular uh stage of the pentacles versus other stages queens and so on focus that one is key 
because at a stage when one is developing, unless there is focus, then uh, there, uh, there's distraction and, and things collapse. And so I think the key word here is focus. Right, and, and keeping, keeping focus, absolutely. It's, yeah. not, mm -hmm. it's not going out and dissipating. And bar. interesting enough, the page is focusing on that pentacle. Right. So that right, and so yeah, he's not he's not out in some bar. No, getting drunk, <laughs> or, okay. or has a pendulum here is looking over here, right, or looking to right. the, uh, looking somewhere else. Right. This is something interesting in the tarot decks, which which I think uh, either makes or kills tarot decks is where they're looking and what you know the the gesture of 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 the actual uh, person. What what are they? Where are they looking? Right. Okay, so this is the Knight of Pentacles. So he's he's all ready to go. He's got what he needs. Uh, you know, this would be like the the young Marine Corps officer who's completed his training and he's ready to go out and face any any trouble. And uh, he's got his he's got his armor and uh, he's got his world in, by the tail. And it's uh, persistence, diligence. The Knight of Pentacles demands tasks be ed ed executed uh, with patience and care, that hard work and realistic expectations are sometimes the best approach. Hard work and realistic expectations. So, um, yeah, in, in, uh, in the pentacles specifically, I would say that also what's really important is that this knight now has a vehicle. He has another, he has a vehicle, whether a path, uh, uh, you know, his skills, he brings a vehicle with him to take him where he needs to go. He's not right. standing on the ground, you know, focusing. He's not, now he's got, he's riding a vehicle. Yes. Okay. So he's, mm -hmm. he's got what he needs to sally forth. He's a mature adult. Right. Yeah. He's found a vehicle, which could be a path, uh, uh, you know, what he writes, the magic carpet ride or yeah. whatever it is he's writing. It might be the wrong vehicle, but nonetheless, it's a He's vehicle. on a vehicle. Yeah, that's right. And, and he needs to now discern whether it's the right vehicle right. or not. Exactly. Whether he'll keep riding that one till the next stage or fall yeah. off, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> or break his leg, as I did <laughs> at that point. Okay, so here's the Queen of Pentacles. And uh, the Queen says, uh, nurturing, replenishment, generosity, the Queen of Pentacles uh, reminds us to connect with our feminine intellect as well as creativity and nature. And so, um, you know, generosity of a, of a rich lady, I guess you'd think of in this mm -hmm. case, right? Right. The other side of the coin would be that she's, she's entrenched in that throne. Yeah. So she's yeah, not yeah, standing, others... she's not standing with the community that she's in, entrenched in a position of authority. Yeah, the and, others. Yeah, the other side of the coin is uh, Melania, Melania, whether, Melania Trump wearing a jacket that says "I really don't care." Right? That's the negative side of that. Mm. She's no, definitely entrenched. Right. Whether she will step out of her throne in order to effectuate, you know, something right. other than what she already has acquired. Right. And then the King of Pentacles, reliability, practicality, the King of Pentacles signifies stability and confidence and emphasizes the value of success gained through principled intellect. Um, okay, and so... Um, through, through, you said through principle and intellect? No, through, through principled intellect. Oh, principled okay, intellect. So, yeah, so our, in this case, our former president is the reverse of this card, right? <laughs> mm. Well, uh, I think that the, the intellect is part of an, the integral uh, 
composite that allows for meaning and purpose to be realized and for that be a happy king right, right it's not right. just intellect this isn't an intellect king look at his robe his robe is full of grapes yeah. so um there's a richness in abundance this is about abundance and um the ability to uh what 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 usually i found that in tarot it's not the card itself. It is, it is about where it came from and where it's going. Mm -hmm. You know, so when once you've got this abundance, right? The king has all this abundance. Yeah. So in every way, it has uh you know, and all the material things that allow that feed the human being uh, uh, manifested form food, clothing, shelter, a certain safety. So uh, now the king is ready to what? Yeah, I'm just looking at Robert Wang's book What's here. he going to do with all of that? Because if he doesn't do something, it turns toxic. Isn't that funny? Uh, okay. The grapes will get old. Uh, the the throne will start crumbling, and you know, eight, time will have a will have its way. So it always points to uh, what does that look like if you were seated there with all this abundance? Yeah. What what would you what what, what is the next step? Well, um, you you have to be aware be aware that you have to take care of your people right somebody's getting you there right and so the point is you know we have lots of captains of industry these days and they don't want to credit the fact that all the rest of us in our taxes are paying for the roads and paying for all the everything that supports the business right and they don't want to pay taxes uh, so they don't want to pay for what they have um, you know these these uh, wealthy billionaires who uh, don't want any taxes they don't want to pay for for the roads that they their trucks drive on and and uh, all the other things that our society gives them like educated people to do the work and all of that, they, they say, oh, that's not my problem. But actually it is because, <laughs> you know, we are the ones that do the work and we are the ones that, that create the roads that their trucks drive on, mm. uh, right? Yes. That's tricky because if that king has not embodied all of the other transitions of all those numbers before, yep. then they always look ahead. Well, now because I am a good manager, let's say for example, of the money, then we're gonna work now on going to Mars, let's say, and yeah. uh, all of these other things. And we're doing, we're doing something that uh, advances civilization, whether the half of the population is not involved or not. It's, it's, so that's tricky. That's the other side of that coin. Right. Okay. Um, now I do have, I'm not sure I've done this right, but I have uh, the pages of pentacles of these four um, suits that are the, what I, I say. I might, might be interesting in the, uh, the uh, star tarot, star man tarot, what that does look like. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a future week. Um, but the, we're going to use this week to dedicate to these four, um, these four uh, decks. decks. Okay. Right. So right. in the upper left is the uh, rider weight deck. In the upper right is the um, golden dawn deck. In the upper in the lower left is the Toth deck, and in the lower right is the Marseille deck, which is one of the oldest decks. Um, and um, and so here's here's what Robert Wang says about the Prince of Pentacles. Um, I think is that what we're talking? I don't know. We're 
Oh, I'm looking at the wrong card. Here. Yeah, the, the, it, it's always confusing with the tall. So it's um, the um, so the Prince of Discs. That's is is that um, the 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 king or the what? I, I I have to look at the book. Well, I don't know. I haven't gotten to the to the king yet. Let's work on that. So that's the page. Uh, yes, this is the page. I'm just looking for what Robert Wang says about the pages. Okay, I have those two Crowley books here. Right. Well, um, let's see. Night. Okay. I get him confused. So the knight, the king, the prince. So the prince discs would be the night okay it would be the night the prince of discs would uh, functions as the night and the other uh, and the, we have a page a night and the mars marseille is what a page a page it looks like uh, the, yeah it's a ballet he's a ballet of okay and the princess of pentacles is uh yes yeah, so in this case the uh, Toth deck, um, you, you, you would have, you would have to be a page. You would have had to put there the princess of discs. Yeah. So we have the princess of pentacles here, but I just can't find uh, the princess what? of discs. Would be the Toth deck equals to a page. Mm -hmm. Right. Because um, I'm looking at the book right now. And um, right, I have the wrong card here. That's yeah, correct. They just work it a little differently. Yeah. Because they're all about alchemy. So, transformation of elements. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's confusing. I have to look it up myself. Okay. So, I think I've got it. Well, I hope. Age. All right. So because the pr Princess of Pentacles. Yeah. Okay. The, the, this is the one. Okay. This is the one. I've got what Prince Robert Wang says. Okay. Yeah. It's, the, it's either the Princess of Pentacles or the Princess of Discs. Okay. But anyway, yeah. it's the Princess of Pentacles, Princess of Echoing Hills, Rose of the Palace of Earth. Princess and Empress of the Gnomes, Throne of the Ace of Pentacles. The Princess of Pentacles is Earth of Earth, the personification of the specific Earth in the world of primal Earth. Her golden dawn, uh, which is the upper right there, att attribute is a winged ram's head made a, hel uh, made a helmet by Crowley suggesting that she is a completion of that found in the Princess of Wands. The princesses are less dependent on one another than are the other court cards insofar as the elements are blended in Malkuth, which is a, which is a uh, the bottom Bala idea. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you want to talk about these cards in more specifics? Uh, um, yeah, let's say in, in here, the, in the, the princess of discs would be, which is not represented there on the top deck. Yeah, unfortunately, I, uh, I got the wrong card there. I apologize for that. The instinct is search for emotional security, mm -hmm. goal, would be physical union like pregnancy or birth. Um, so it's, it's, it's a creative process starting. And, right. and, and since you've gone through right. the other numbers, you're in essence, if you think about it, it would be number 11. Okay, 10, yeah. 11. So then you, you're now ready to. Um, uh, have a manifestation which 
you have already manifested yourself and now you're ready to both uh, bring in a a companion that allows for the first for something to the second right thing. okay I've, I've found the um i found the card here anyway from the Toth deck so I'll, yeah i'll just show it here uh, so this is the the princess of discs in the Toth, and uh were you just reading the the Toth on this or what? yes mm -hmm. Yes, that's the one. Right. Uh, let's say as a person, it says um, a young sensual woman who is concerned with expressing her creativity that has been concealed up to now. She has a natural earthy character, a phlegmatic but warm temperament and considerable perseverance in the pursuit of goals which she has set. Mm -hmm. an essential valuable impulse that will bear fruit in the long run so right. you, there's a certain like a seed she's, she's a seed right. that's starting to sprout well and what I, what I would say is very likely this is um, an anima figure right because uh, the, the young woman uh, is the is the element that cons young men into coming into life mm -hmm. and actually getting into life and all the troubles of life, right? Exactly. And until a young man meets a woman um, that attracts him and causes him to want to be with her and so on, um, he's he's all up in his head. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> figuring figuring out how he's going to make all his money but um but that's not where life is life is is uh in in the complications of life itself which uh involve well, getting were... drawn into life right and so the the princess of cups or of pentacles yes. is is the one that's drawing you in and so, you know, I'm sure a lot of young men who, who think the former president is, you know, the, the greatest, they probably think Ivanka is, you know, the anima. She's wonderful because she's rich and she's pretty and, and she's smart and so on. So uh, many young men would fawn over her. <laughs> So this card, uh, if I were to give it a word, uh, is the inspiration behind uh, whatever material um, form is already present. So just like mm -hmm. you said, there is the inspiration, the, the one that attracts and magnetizes the creative inspiration. It's, it's key. Like the other right. one was focus. Now inspiration here is is is, is 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 what's what manifests that that uh, desire to evolve and connect and entice or whatever else comes with yeah. material life but is there is inspiration yeah. it's not stale it's, it's inspired yeah it, it inspires a young man to get into life right ba basically I and mean, exactly. Hen henry Carippa says that he has the Wang deck, um, which is the archetypal deck. And uh, we have it here, but we don't have time to go into it tonight. Um, oh, yes, I, I get confused with the three decks. Is, the, is that the, the one with the green cover, with the green box? That's the man city with the red? There's I, a few. Honestly, I don't remember because I have a pile of decks and and uh, Robert uh, Wang has written four books right. about the Tarot, so I'm not actually sure. Mm. Um, okay, so he has the you know because he, he's he's written several books. Yes, he has without the archetypal Jungian approach, and then. Um, Why and then the he's... archetypal Jungian approach. Right, exactly. Um, and there's uh, major arcana cards there. 
Right. Um, right. So yes, inspiration in the form of of the physical manifesting of of something tangible is is this card uh, has that the, the, okay. the seed of manifest of inspiration. Okay. Not in the, the head, in the thoughts, but right. embodied as a. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, I want to get into life. I want to. I want to meet this woman mm -hmm. and make her. Yes, I want to touch. I want to. Yeah. You know, it's 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 it's, it's physical. Yeah. The yeah. Physic, there's a physicality to the manifest to the inspiration. I would say. Right. A physicality involved in the in, in the manifestation. Right. Of the inspiration. So here I'll here I'll show the um, the the knights now. Um, Um, well, that will be the other card will be uh, the knight in the top deck is the king. The knight in the top deck is the king. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Okay, Remember so you I, and the, oh, that bottom right. card. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, bottom right. card. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it would be the prince that you showed before. Right. The prints that you had in your set before of hand. Okay, so it's confusing. It, yeah, I'm sorry. I got this wrong. Uh, so so the three cards on the the top and on the right bottom are correct. But the one yeah. on the lower left is actually the king in the toss deck. Right. And, um, and then, whoops. No. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I, I apologize. I didn't get this right tonight when I was setting up these cards. <clears throat> um, but let's talk about the princesses that we have, or the prin the princes that we have, uh, and the knights. Um, Okay, so it's the Prince of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles, the Cavalier of, Pen of Pentacles, or of Denier, whatever that is, and then money. I don't, yeah, of money. Okay, and let's see if I have the. I probably have the Denier, prin Cedric. the Prince, Prince of Discs. Ah. Yeah, you, you had it in the last one. You can just pop it up if you like. Right. No, I, I have it in my hand. So right. let me... Um, yeah, it's the one that was featured in, in the last... Um, right. Okay, so let me show that quickly in the top. All right, so this is the... Right. The, the Prince of Discs in the top mm -hmm. deck. Okay, and he's he's got everything under control. He's, right. So here it says diligence, concentration, and endurance, perseverance, and great bodily effort, with a ponderous sensual temperament, <laughs> stabilization through work, growth, perseverance, maturity, and success. Right. Reliability, yeah. purpose, first purposefulness you came you uh, the shadow the shadow may be stubbornness pragmatic nature stag stagnation yeah the bull with the horns and right. of course he's got a spiritual aspect here with the right the orb and the cross in his right because hand. sometimes in order to have that perseverance and that strength and and carry on one has to kind of say well let, i just need to keep going i need to keep going otherwise i'm not going to make it so that's that duality there that um one has to face right and so you know it is it is like a young mature man who has to face whatever battles are are there um and, um, Right, also has to do, you know, knowledge of time and the, what the necessary uh, time frame, 
to best guarantee for good progress in the field surrounding what, what their purpose is. Yeah. Okay, so, so at the same, it, it's got that at the same time as the, the bodily effort mm -hmm. and strength needs to be present at the same time to, in order to be successful, then they have to be also paying attention to the how flexibility necessary right. when right, some right, right. an obstacle arises and not just forge through right uh and so henry kirpa says israel regardi uh, something about israel regardi um the, I, I do agree that Wang, uh, it's probably pro properly pronounced Wang, and it's a, it's a name in Chinese, believe it or not, um, means king in Chinese. Uh, yeah. But in any case, um, Wang did the, this deck, um, the Prince of Pentacles and, and the rest of this deck based on, on the advice of Israel Regardi. That's correct. Mm, uh, right. And, um, and so it's basically Israel Regardi's guidance of Robert Wang that produced this deck on the upper right. And the, and the lower left is, uh, well, it's not the king in this case because they change things around but right. the it's the toth deck and that was done by alistair crawley and um well it was frida lady frida drew it yeah lady lady frida something i didn't i don't remember her last name um, well it's, it's see it's very interesting how it develops because uh in the marseillais this the relationship of this card also means that you have to plow through and so on. And you're also riding a vehicle. You're now you've got your vehicle, you're sitting on it. Mm -hmm. And so there is a relationship that that even though um, your your efforts are involved, you know, physical efforts and all kinds of efforts, you still are in relationship to your intelligence, your psyche, and your compassion as you're effectuating your physical force right um, and, and so this is and the marseillais represent you can see the marseillais card which is a much earlier version mm -hmm. he's he's i mean he's going but he's not you know um all that sure he, he's he's just there making an effort but he's not oblivious to well you know He's still awake looking at what else could be possible, right? He doesn't look like he's, he's totally aggressive or he's just plowing along. That's also part of, of, of this one. Is that you kind of plow along because you need that physical stamina. Mm -hmm. And if you use too much of it, then, then, you, then you're off kilter in many ways. So here um, you need your physical stamina so you pay attention to the compassion and the um, intelligence and and then you can move forward in in a way that you're grounded because right okay and so this is this is also uh, the knights are the are the sort of manifestation of the mature human being like the end of the uh, the hero's journey before uh, the spiritual quest really begins. There's no look, nobody's looking for a spiritual uh, answer here in their lives. They're all out there. We're going to go do it. You know, Semper Fidelis, Aruga, and all that. That's. <laughs> That's but they would do well to contemplate all the, uh, their, their heart center and their intelligence in order to be integral in their right. process. Right. But it, it, traditionally, um, 
wars are fought by young men. And so the hero uh, is a young man, like the oldest man on an aircraft carrier typically is uh, the captain and, or maybe he's providing passage to an admiral, but the, the captain is the captain of the ship and he's like 45 years old, which is still less than half a human life. And, and so it's only after retirement that military people start to develop the spiritual quest, right? Because up until then, they're <laughs> just forging ahead, you know, the night. Uh, let's go get them, the night of coins. Mm, let's... But, but if they develop at the same time also that quality, then uh, they can do their job a lot better whatever it is and certainly true it's uh it's very hard to do when you're when you're doing that when you're yes when, when you're in those military um, when you're still in the position of a messenger yeah it's, it's kind of like uh, a messenger it's like in the in the movie top gun there's a there's a line in one of the songs no way out while you're in it <laughs> and, uh -huh. and um and so, you know, but you it's, just... it's helpful to to get in touch with those things because if you're not, and something happens, that's why uh, a lot of them, get, when something happens, can become uh, permanently mentally disturbed and so on. So, really? to 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 be able to get in touch with the fact that these things exist and they're there. Um, it helps them become more integral to face whatever situation arises yeah, in their yeah. being a messenger. They're still a messenger. Somebody's giving them orders and they're a messenger. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're still in the messenger and they, they're still not seated in their own throne, which would be the next uh, card. Yeah. The way the Marines say it though, is uh, if the, if the Marine Corps wanted you to have a wife, it would have issued you one, <laughs> oh. right? <laughs> uh, Goodness, I mean that's God has spoken. <laughs> God has spoken, right? Forget that stuff. <laughs> Forget that spiritual stuff. That's where mm. we have. In fact, we don't even have Marine Corps chaplains. We have Navy chaplains, and so. Um, mm people who are doctors, corpsmen, Navy corpsmen, and chaplains often find themselves in the Marine Corps. Oh. <laughs> and, and they don't necessarily like it. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because if you're a chaplain on the battlefield and you have to give last rights to someone, <laughs> <laughs> you the might next, be blown too yeah the, na the <laughs> next person that gets la last rights might be you right yes um and uh, so anyway so, so that it, it sounds like the marines have a little wiggle room there to improve oh assuredly <laughs> however you know you uh, the marines aren't there for uh, balance. They're there for winning. <laughs> I mean, for as a weapon, right? And it's mm. not, it's to, the, the weapon is to be sharp. It's not to be balanced. Um, okay, so let's take a quick look at the queens uh, and, um, and you can uh, tell me what, what you want. Queens, where are they? Where, okay, this is the queens. Okay, so this time I think I did get it right. <laughs> um, and so yes. here, here's the Queen of Pentacles and the Rider Waite, the and the Golden Dawn, and this is the Toth Queen, and this is the Queen in the Marseille deck. And so, do you want to talk about those? So it's very interesting that, that the queen did not get her name changed, but all the other three did. So that's interesting. You know, the Toth changed to princesses and this and that, but the queens remained queens 
in everyone's uh, mm -hmm. deck. So that's very interesting. Very interesting. That mm. means that, that it's a major uh, receptacle that cannot be changed. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. a position of, of um, uh, yeah this the Taf queen is quite interesting look at yeah, those yes they're very beautiful I mean she did an absolutely beautiful job mm -hmm. in her in her artwork um, well she's got uh, in the pentacle in, in, in this particular deck she seems to be there, she has developed her wand has a crystal at the top mm -hmm. out of her out of her head she's got antennas they might be a little heavy but nonetheless <laughs> she's got them there mm -hmm. um, and she's seated in, in something that's supporting her so she's got a lot going for her and then she's got she's holding that um, uh, sacred geometry almost like flower of life um, right. So that I suppose it's saying that the the abundance of of what creates life, and right. um, she has a hold on her hand holds all of those keys that create life. Yeah, and she's she's uh, she's not going to change. That's what this goat means, I think. Mm. Right. Okay. Um, well, it also means that 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 she's pretty close to her uh, animal, her in her animal instincts. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know they're yes, alive. Yes. They're, they're alive, right. and yeah, and, very much so. Yeah, she's and, wearing. Yeah. she she's wearing a, a helmet of bees, and she's got horns growing out of her helmet. Uh, right. So she's taking we, her the material realization to to the hill. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, it's it's it, you know the family as a stable and secure foundation, femininity, mm -hmm. opulence, overflowing fertility. Yeah, the goat um, represents obstinance. I would say, um, right? A certain certain kind of, and also yeah, a certain kind of obstinance and forging because that looks like Aries. It's got the you know the yeah. it's facing you, so she will. She will forge when those uh, connection to what's vital in 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 the material in 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 satisfying the senses. She will challenge you to that. Right. Yeah. Um, Let's see what else. Um, right. Okay. Now going back up now to the. This is the Rider Waite Queen. So. so it also talks about agriculture and fertility. So she's mm -hmm. completely connected to the earth and, right. and, and, and the animal instincts, meaning that, you know, the earth is, she recognizes the abundance on earth is essential in order to, for a human life to thrive. And right. she will challenge. So that, that's good. That's She's, she would be like the challengers now with the, the green and the ecosystems and the trees would mm -hmm. be represented by this queen. Right. Uh, she will fight to right. maintain and the earth. And, and she's and obstinate the, as a billy goat. And yeah. Here, here mm -hmm. she is. Has but she goat. also charges as one. But look, this is, you can hardly see, but you see the rabbit here? The rabbit on the, the rabbit. lower corner? I noticed it in another deck because the color in here blends the rabbit with the grass. It's on the lower right hand corner. Oh yes. Oh yeah, yes. So she's got a rabbit there. Right. Rabbit is, is fertility yeah, and sure. luck and all of that. So right. it also speaks of the earth. This is the, the rabbit's ears. Yes. The yeah. rabbit. Yeah, you see it is coming in. Yeah. The, Interesting. Yes. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I never noticed that before. I had not either. I, I saw it on another deck that was colored differently. Mm -hmm. And so it stood out more. And I said, right. oh, she's got a rabbit. Just like the queen of, uh, of wands has a cat. Mm -hmm. So this one has a rabbit. means fertility and right. um, the and abundance. So we have, a, we have a flowing river. And right. Fertility and abundance is here 
Right. She will she will fight for that. And Verdant's in, in her actual cape there too. Okay, so then over here, this is a this is a different look of the queen. She's got a goat there too, and she's got a, a jewel, a gem. She holds the world in her hands and she's got her spiritual life under control, I guess is what you'd say there. Mm -hmm. Because these, de these decks from the Golden Dawn were aware of their transcendence. That's what they were working on. They mm -hmm. were working on being uh, spiritually transcending while at the same time being, being you know, on the earth. So that right. you can see in her in her uh, necklace or whatever it is, but she's yeah. got uh, two wings and, uh, and the head yeah. of uh, something. And but she's still protecting herself. She's got she's got steel shin pads. <laughs> yes, yeah, she, she's still in the earth. Right. And she's trying to, from the earth, be able to uh, evolve. Yeah. The other the other sections because you don't see any grapes or trees or anything, so. So it's trying to evolve that side that, that you cannot see. Right. But she's, you know, it's solid on the earth. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll... it has a sensuality, of, you know, the goat, you know, sometimes, you know, the goat then turns into the devil and so on. So, <laughs> um, you know, the goat represents a certain um, stability. She's, she's got that sensuality. under control. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to comment on the Marseille queen? Yeah, I, th here? I think the Marseille uh, plays a lot with colors. Mm -hmm. So the colors mean a lot in the Marseille. Right. Um, she holds it simply to, to um, but, but she's, she doesn't have any of, of the, at that time, I would imagine that you, you didn't, she didn't go to the fields to check out the grapes or, you know, or right. walk in the, in the gardens to pick up yeah. flowers. She probably had to sit in the throne or inside and do some other business. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that, this reminds me of if you've rule. got it, fla flaunt it. So she's flaunting exactly. her wealth. And sort of like uh, the first Queen Elizabeth who, you know, had to rule. So she's, it, it, to me, in, in this deck, it's, it's more a participation in, in, in the ruling of the matters that are going on. Yeah, this is the ruling class. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because okay. there's no, no nature abundance here. Yeah, so there's lots of nature and abundance here. That's yes. very clear. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's also holding in her hand the flower of life. So flower is the blossom that, that arises. You're, you're talking about this? The, yes, the you see the, mandala, the, the coin? Yeah, right, you see the, the what's inside of it, the drawings? Well, it's, it's uh, mandorlas. That's sacred, geom sacred yeah. geometry. That's right. like what you see in the flower of life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're right, so, so you connect, 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 it's all the same. And then right, it creates right. it creates right, uh, right. something else. So the connectivity to the earth it uh, yields uh, higher states when when there's abundance. Right. We have the freedom to. to I just wonder it. what she meant by making the the scene here look very much like a desert with a lot of dead trees on it. Mm. That I don't get. Let me see. Well. Well, the trees have stars right on top of them. And just, uh, let's see, um, a mother of the earth symbolizes a mature woman with much experience in life who stands with both feet on the ground, who knows how to protect what is entrusted to her. She mm -hmm. embodies vitality and creativity, understanding how to set in boundaries and assert herself. Patience, sensuality, and trustworthiness are her essential characteristics. I have to it. say that this is one of my favorite cards in the in the Toth deck. Yes, it's very beautiful. Um, yeah, it's very beautiful. Um, yeah, the, the, the princess too is very beautiful. 
Right, and um, the and and this diamond that's on the top of the wands is pretty impressive because mm -hmm. it's got right. a six-pointed star on it, and and it shows that it's it's uh, a, you know a see right. It's glass. crystallizing. It's crystallizing the abundance of the earth into right. whatever dimension. Right. She's so a bit really... top heavy with those horns. I'll say. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to be sleeping with that. Yeah, but. so so that also represents that when you are in a position like that, also you you do have to carry a certain amount of weight that can feel like weight right. because too much earth weight it, it becomes heavy when, yeah. when it's not you know trans, uh, transcending in light. So mm -hmm. her task is to to uh, connect to everything related to. Uh, the physical senses and sensual right. and, and abundance and production, fertility, and all of that. Okay, um, so I'm going to wrap it up here because I uh, I messed up setting up the kings, and maybe we'll talk about them next week and move mm -hmm. on to our other favorite decks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, okay, and. Right. Um, and so thank you, Gilda, mm -hmm. for uh, pushing me along on the panel tonight when everyone else has abandoned us. Uh, yes, Jor I found. Jordan is moving to Taos, so he's been quite busy. Uh, lately. He must have moved by now already. No, right? I, actually, I got a, a text message from him saying that he, he ultimately decided to have professional movers uh, m <laughs> move his stuff. And so he's actually oh. still in Philadelphia and he's going to fly to Taos instead of driving, which, oh. uh, which makes a lot more sense, I think. Yes, um, with the whole pandemic thing and all that. Yeah, it's and a plus, reality. right. And plus, um, you know, if you look at the costs of moving your furniture, you're probably better off selling whatever it is you've got and getting new furniture on the other end. Um, right. Well, it depends on, on what you've got. Yeah. Uh, but because selling can be, you, you might get absolutely nothing. And right. then you have an expense. So yeah, cost effective. But And then yeah. you might never be able to replace if you have quality furniture. It will cost you a lot to replace. Right. So Mekti says, um, uh, I like the energy of only two of you, though. And uh, <laughs> who's that? Well, one of the YouTube um, chatters here, his um, name is Mekti. Um, um, Mekti. Yeah. Interesting last name. And uh, yeah, it's, he says it's more intimate. Yeah. So mm. I agree. So yeah. it was. Uh, well, your horoscope and mine uh, are harmonious. Oh, is that true always or only today? No, that's true in, from the point of astrology. But and it, it, it exhibits itself as it does. Uh, it exhibits itself as a what? As it's doing, as a harmonious conversation we're having. Right. Okay. And and so, but but my question was, are are planets always harmonious or or only today? But natally, natally, that means that that, that connection is there. Oh, okay. Naturally. So, yes. So it's the usual thing. Yeah. You understand if I bring something up, you, you understand what the point that where I'm coming from. Right. And I understand the point you're coming from. So, you know, when engaging, then it, it moves forward instead of uh, getting lost or stuck or distracted or something. Right, else. right, right. Um, so, may I ask when your birthday is? Oh, I'm a Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Um, yeah, fire sign with moon and Gemini, which is air, which goes right. with Libra and Aquarius rising, which is also air. But I have, you know, like Venus and Scorpio and such like that. And you have a lot of Scorpio going on. So yeah, your, I, I, your Libra, I, which is airy and the Scorpio that clicks uh, with all uh, with my sun, my Venus. My... Yeah. So, so I'll just uh, for fun show you the card that the 
uh, you know, fire and air, you know, fire, uh, air ignites fire and then it gets going. (laughs) Yeah. So um, just just for fun, do you do you you know what tarot card is uh, applies to my birthday? My birthday is October 5th. So do you know what tarot card? No, no, you know, I don't have that down pat. Right. I, I can read astrology on its right. own, but this the whole uh, matrix of Kabbalah and astrology embedded in it is something that was created. And, right. and um, I can look, yeah, I'm not sure. No, no, I'm going to show you here. That That's the one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the three. It's the three of swords, yes. Really? For October 5th, that's the one? That's so can one. you tell me which I am December 17th, which is the one for December 17th? Oh, December 17th. I'm, I'm not sure I can because I have to be looking at the chart to do that. I, I did see the chart here. Oh, I thought Wang's you had a list. Mm. Well, I do have a list, but I don't have it right in front of me at this moment. Well, 17 is the star. 17 is, is uh, I mean, as far as I'm, it's immortality, it's 71 in, in many other references, is, is the card of, of immortality, it's the card of the star, is, is, an, is an eight, when you add seven and one, eight, okay. it, creates, it creates that, uh, that eight loop of infinity, okay. but it operates as a seven means a full realized being and a one. So, okay, so um, you're saying it's December 17th. I did find it here. Yes. Okay, so what's so the card? Let me get it for you. Just a moment. It should be the star. You know, I can, I can uh, with my knowledge, I would say I, it's the I, start. I, I know what it is. Just, just a second. Um, it's, it's this card. Um, You're going to say, yes, of course, probably, <laughs> when I show it to you. <laughs> oh, the, you, you found it already? Yep, the Ten oh, of Wands. Oh, dreadful. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's because of Saturn, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's Saturn is around doing its thing, making things heavy. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I can so, understand. So the, this is from, um, I'll show you where this comes from. Um, December 17th, that's the card. Gee, what happened to the star? <laughs> Good question. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I said the same thing about the the swords through the heart. But... Yeah, they crucified you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at this book, The Kabbalistic oh. Tarot textbook of mystical philosophy and this is the chart um okay all right and when you looked at the chart that's the card for that day yep horror (laughs) (laughs) well i'm not very happy about the three of swords either so gee (laughs) yeah it has to do with saturn i believe some you know heavy task maker Geez, you, you've uh, you've managed to live your whole life without knowing that. <laughs> well, no, 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 I only embodied it. <laughs> I, I wasn't intellectually pointing it out. Right. But right. Uh, I was thinking, well, something's something's odd here because you know it's ruled by Jupiter, but the number eight is Saturn. So and so, it's like driving, always driving with your foot on the brake. Because that's that's what Saturn does to the expansiveness of Jupiter. I see. So Saturn has always got the foot on the brake over well, of Jupiter, Jupiter. right? Yeah. Jupiter is the opposite of Saturn. It's yeah, expansion, and Saturn says yeah. uh, discipline. So what does that mean? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. but it's a ten. It's the end of a certain kind of journey. Well, it's the end of the wands. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's the end of creativity. But and, that, and, and if you really want to know the different things, since you mentioned that, 
I can always dig up how that combines. Mm -hmm. It says that um, that a, a being like that, because it has seen it all and has taken every burden to this the last of his of his of the shore, yeah. can turn around and face in and face any and know from experience right. and be and able to advise the many because they've been through all of it. Right. And you're, you're, uh, that's carrying, why, it's a, that's why you, it's a 10 and a one. You, you've carried a lifetime of creative projects, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and the stamina behind it. The because without stamina. The, Without so the fire to, activity, there were none. I none of it would have been realized. You needed right. so, you know what's very interesting. You might like to look into. It's called the uh, Human Design, Human Design book. So it talks about the Human Design book is a new, and it it, it um, has a graph and a thing, and it uses the I Ching astrology and mm -hmm. probably a few other things. Mm -hmm. And it's and it has four kinds of people. Four kinds according to your birthday and so on right it's got the manifest the uh, generators the manifesting generators the reflectors and one more okay so most people who are generators and that's according to where the planets lie in your body if you have mm -hmm. any planet in your in your sacrum then you are you've got generator going mm -hmm. that means you've got the skill and, and the physicality and to the force to do to do labor right. there are many people who make loss and do anything that never lift a finger and have never lifted a finger for anything yeah. so someone like that cannot really set rules for all of the people that all they do is lift their finger and labor because they have no clue they only right. work from in from the if from, from intellect and, and, and space, but they, right. they don't really know what is needed. Right. So that's someone who has gone through the whole shkabula knows what is needed because right. they've so been there. Just in case makes a nice comment to you. He says, she'll be the star of the family when she gets home, having <laughs> carried that heavy burden. Hopefully someone has prepared a nice dinner for her. <laughs> oh well thank you that's very kind of you but yeah. but like that says i prepare my own dinner <laughs> yeah. okay i All have right. to prepare my own dinner so. yeah so that's um, i i often have at, to too at this point right. but it's okay because uh the i have turned around and I'm and uh, now is facing the trans what it takes to do the transcendent function. Yeah, and Henry Cutter Debbie persists. knows something about the transcendent function because oh, she yeah, works sure. with Poa. Right, right, definitely, <laughs> and mm -hmm. with the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, right, or uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I'm sure uh, she's actually. Every Friday night, she's teaching a course on the Tibetan Book of the Dead now. Oh, she is? Yeah. Oh, um, oh nice. So, yeah, I mean, that, was, that was the reason why I ever even came into Buddhism, because I wanted to learn about reincarnation, and the Buddhists were so, uh, their matrix is so advanced, and they, I mean, it's, in, it's, it's between the Tartans and the, and the Tulkus and everyone else that's reborn and, and continues, um, they've been actually manifesting that form, that right. concept of reincarnation. Yeah, Whereas so the Hindus, which is what, what I came from before, Kriya Yoga, um, they don't uh, deliberately uh, work that wheel of reincarnation the way that the Tibetans do. Yeah, the Tibetans are quite important impressive they basically sat in caves in yep. the himalayas for a thousand years and thought about uh the, the how the psyche works and came yeah. up with the technology of, yeah mm -hmm. how the, the technology they master the us. mind part right uh and they do also include some body work like in 
uh, and the, some breathing techniques they have, and oh yeah, oh uh, Tumo or something I, I forget. Yeah. And um, but the the the, the Hindus um, or the Indian people, because I was corrected, you know, the Hindus mm. are the ones of the Hindu religion. The Indians are Indians. Um, they uh, mastered to its limit the 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 kundalini thing and the, and mm -hmm. the postures and the and and all of that because they, their theme was to leave bye bye and not come back whereas right. the tibetans continue to to uh reemerge yeah they or, stay there uh, and uh, they talk to you from up there at least connected to, yeah Mm -hmm. They can come down if they want to, but uh, yeah. they'll come down in, in ways in which are ephemeral, you know, yeah. like one of the saints uh, never casted a shadow. Uh, you, you never casted a shadow? No, I, that would be great. If I get there, I'll be oh, in heaven. Uh, if I don't cast it's... a shadow, that means that um, I can't be grasped. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> By right. anything. Right. Same, it seems good. Okay, so uh, our thanks to the YouTube audience today. Uh, many of you have been quite loyal and stuck to us. Um, I just mentioned that um, several of us are putting together a conference for uh, June of next year, 2022, uh, and it's going to be uh, the creative the creator's art uh, and about a cre creating a life, about creating a life. And it's going to be the intersection of psychology, religion, art, and education. And we're going to do this uh, in uh, yeah. Helena, Montana, in the, in the studio of my partner, Tim Holmes. And so I urge everyone to mark your calendar. Uh, it's not going to be an expensive conference. Uh, it might be a little expensive if you're in Denmark to come to it, <laughs> yeah, to get to it. Um, but uh, the conference itself will be between 350 and $500. And a part of that will be in art supplies that we will provide at that time. Um, is so, that area in the mountains and where there's lots of trees or? or? Well, no, um, it's between mountain ranges, okay. I, would, I would say. In the valley of mountain ranges. Yeah, so it's but, not the desert. Thank no, goodness. but it's the continental divide. And uh, I, I can give you a sense of it here. What do I, you mean by continental divide? Continental divide means that if if a um, uh, if a drop of rain comes down um, on one side of the divide, it will flow to the east. And if it comes down on the other side, it will flow to the west. Okay. And Sounds like a pretty active place. Yeah. And so let's see if I have a picture of it here. Oh, it's right where, where, where it divides. Exactly. Oh. Right. Exactly where the continent divides. And, oh. uh, I actually where do the have... Flow, where the flow uh, divides. Right. So I actually have oh. a nice picture of it, which I'll show you here. Um, so it's like it's like Munich, which is or München, as the Europeans say, which is uh, between the Alps. So, you know, mm. Munich is known to be an Alpine city, but it, the Alps are in the distance, like this. And there's a, a plain, but you're actually at oh, the so. highest point in the North American continent. Is um, that so? Yeah. Oh, and isn't so, that interesting? Right. And so this is the front steps of the state house in Helena, Montana, that which is the capital of Montana. And so as you see on a clear day, you can see forever. And the flags here represent the Native American nations uh, that also share Montana with the United States. 
and um, oh. so they are they are sovereign nations, each one of them. And so uh, are they water uh, bodies, bodies of water around, like lakes uh, and rivers? Or? Well, it looks like there's something there. I yeah, it I, looks like something. I, there. I don't know. I haven't really looked at the map. I was, I was only there for 33 hours <laughs> or, <laughs> oh. earlier or last month. Oh, a month right. ago today. It was a month ago today. I was there for uh, 33 hours. Mm. But, uh, but you can see this is the Rocky Mountains or yeah, you know, the Rockies, and um, and it's. Uh, so the yeah. continental divide, that's interesting because, you know, the north and the south uh, through the equator also create that divide. That if the water, let's say on the north, when it falls on the sink, runs clockwise mm -hmm. in the south, when it falls in the sink, it, it runs the opposite. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, like the, like uh, hurricanes in the north go you know, flow in one direction and in the south they flow the other direction. Right, so that's interesting. But there, there must be a continental divide in the Andes as well. Mm. Right. That's very peculiar. Yeah, because there's, you know. Because it's invisible. You know, it's something. Well, you have to know where it is. I mean, the, <laughs> you know, the, the uh, surveyors know where the continental divide is. Um, so Justin says, oh, I'd love to attend the conference but i'm on a no-fly list for defending the brit freedom of speech can try talking with the u.s embassy though they owe me a favor i did them well we'll see um you know if you can't fly you can always take the the queen mary <laughs> <laughs> and, oh what uh, a nice boat ride yeah and uh and so anyway um so I he hope. is he's in the military no just in case lives in uh denmark um, is he in the military no no i don't think so not any, no. if he ever was you know he's not now um mm. and so okay. so anyway as you see that uh helena montana is a rather small city uh, but it, it still is the capital of the state of Montana. That's why they call it the Big Sky State, uh, oh. right? Because you can see yeah. lots of sky. You're not bound in by trees or or by buildings, for oh, example. So, so there are not a lot of trees. No, not many. And there. What there happened are, to the trees? They burned down most of them. Uh, oh really? Because oh. we have terrible drought in the U.S. right now, as a matter of fact. Oh. And so. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like, for example, when you uh, look at Vermont, it's very green. When, yeah. When, when, you, when anywhere you um, look, it's green everywhere. Right. But, uh, yeah. So. Just as, like the picture behind you. <laughs> yeah, um, that's not Montana, at oh, least. Okay. But, but it's got but maybe a wide in, maybe in June. I mean, this was early May, so it was before. Right, it's before uh, the spring blossom. Right, but uh, you know, Tim has promised me that it's going to be quite beautiful in mm. June, early June, and then he says, you know, a month later they start to get into the fire season because they have so much drought that. Um, oh really the trees you know they get fires in the mountains and uh, really yeah oh yeah. that's it that's crazy that's wild yeah it's because a, those fires just go on and on and on oh yeah and destroy yeah. so much right okay some of, Gilda. Them, some, some of them are starting that they're started by by for for reasons but right. i don't know about the other ones Right, so uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we're doing uh, Colleen Kiber, and we're oh, talking, talking about our, our spiritual oh. origins. So one of my spiritual origins, I'll just show you. I haven't put it on the... Um, Your spiritual signature, I think. She, what does she call it? Your spiritual... Um, I don't know she called it. Your spiritual mark or something. Yeah, so I'll just... Uh, I share, I, share with you one of the pictures. This 
oh. was in, in my early spiritual self. Beautiful. This the, this is Kodiak, Alaska, uh, and this mountain here is called Barometer, and this mm. mountain is called Old Woman Mountain, and then this is the air base. It's a it's a U.S. Coast Guard base. Now it was a Navy base when I lived there 60 Beautiful. years ago, 70 years ago. I lived there, uh, and uh, you can. It's interesting in this picture. You can see how the runway just ends, and then there's a there's a cliff at the end of the runway, and uh, there back let's see back here there's a road that goes across the runway um where is the cliff i don't see a cliff right here uh, right there oh that's a cliff okay yeah this is this is the pacific ocean here right or the gulf of alaska and mm -hmm. and so uh when i was there somebody took a wrong turn up here at the there was a stoplight here in fact the only stoplight uh, on the base was at that point the, where they would stop you so, while the airplanes took off, right? And yeah. one time some sailor who had drunk too much turned onto the runway accidentally, didn't realize he did in a snowstorm and went right off the end of the runway. Into like, the water? Into the water. He died. Uh, well, they found him about three weeks later, I think. Oh my uh, this, this cliff is actually quite large. It's it's hard to see here. Right there, it looks like it's it's just a step off. But yeah, but it's really like a fifty foot cliff or something. All like that. right, because if he could have gotten out and swam to, if it was yeah. like that, but at fifty feet, forget. Yeah, that. so he <laughs> he drove right off the end of the runway, and oh. he didn't have wings, so uh, mm. he got wings after he landed at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't the kind wow, of wings that was a. Want. That, that, no, it's a shock. Right. So anyway, uh, peace, everyone. Oh, okay. And thank Have you. Have a good evening. Thank you for sharing it with me tonight, mm -hmm. Gilda. You're so very peace. Well. Take care.